the Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Nicole Gaffney, and we're here today with Chef Lee Chismar of Bolite. Hi, Nicole. Welcome Thanks for back. having me. Yes. Always great to have you here on the show. It's great to be here. What are we making today? All right, so today we're going to do a little roasted chicken. We nice. have a local Creaky Tree Farm chicken. Beautiful. And we're going to kind of pair that with uh, a mustard spetzel, um, some nice baby carrots, a little hen of the woods mushrooms. Uh, and just kind of keep it simple and, and have a little bit of fun yeah, with it. Yeah, simple in the lead chisma respect. <laughs> All right, let's get started. All right, so we're going to come over and we'll do the spetzel first. Okay. So I'm going to start, I have three yolks All right. Here. So spetzel, let's talk about what that is first. It's sort of like a German pasta? Yes, a German milk slash egg noodle. Okay. Um, there's, it's spetzel, spetzli, uh, spetzla are three different ways that you can All actually right. say it. Uh, it does take a little root in Pennsylvania Dutch. Of course. Um, and German, obviously. Um, so it's kind of nice when you think about the history of local cuisine and yeah. you try to pair that in there a little That's bit. That's cool. Um, so we're just going to start. I have three uh, egg yolks, mm -hmm. um, three eggs, two cups of milk right mm -hmm. here. It's almost like a dumpling batter more yeah. than a traditional pasta batter. It, it, that's exactly right. Um, and it really, I think it's one of those kind of cool things that if you get it just right, it's so awesome. Nice. Um, when I grew up, my mom's best friend was German, and I can always remember her making it. So from here, I'm going to put about one tablespoon of salt okay. in there. So a good amount of salt. A good amount. So we're going to come in here, too. I have a little whole grain mustard. Nice. Not there. something you typically see in a spetzel. Yeah, and I think it's kind of, this is a great vessel mm -hmm. to kind of get different flavors. Sure. Uh, and it comes out. It's really nice. It's a great way to kind of accent a dish. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take some parsley, mm -hmm. um, and I have a little bit of dill. It's just amazing, the freshness, the brightness it adds to things. Yeah, so I'm dill's kind a great of, herb. It's your flavor of the week. Yeah. So I'm just going to kind of, I took that dill, I'm just going to roll it up in my parsley. Okay. And I'm going to come in here. And just kind of backslice that or chiffonade. That's your signature backslice. <laughs> it's funny, I've been doing it for so long, I forget yeah. that most people don't do Most it. people don't. We <laughs> work with a lot of different chefs on the show, and you're one of the only ones who does this technique. Um, it's but really it cool. is, it's really nice because it really allows your knife to slice mm -hmm. um, whatever you're cutting. It helps kind of keep um, the cell walls intact. It right. holds up better. You can see just how green the herbs still are. Like yeah. if you were just hacking away at those with a knife, they would get all right. browned up immediately. And you would tend to start to see like almost that chlorophyll or the yeah. moisture kind of leak out. Right. Um, so I'm just going to scoop this guy, drop this guy right in. That'll add a nice fresh flavor to this. Yes. Um, and so next, I'm going to come in, just add a little bit of pepper to it. Um, we'll give this a really good whisk. Um, and then if you want to take the flour, sure. and I'm using this as a high gluten flour or bread flour, all right. um, and just kind of slowly go. We're all of it? not going to use all okay. of it. Yeah, we'll see how we get. All right, you tell me when. All right. And so I find it's what I like to do, um, and usually this takes, this would probably take about four cups of flour to okay. the recipe that we're doing. Um, but I'll add until it starts to kind of stand up a little bit mm -hmm. um, and not just fall right down. Um, so you can more. go, yep. All right, now we're getting close. Okay. Um, and this is one of those things that's fun to kind of play around with. So what you want to do, you want to have it just kind of hold shape. Um, if you go too much, you're going to get a really small spetzel because the gluten's okay. going to be developed, where it's that magic where you get it just the right amount of flour in there, where you get some really beautiful noodles. So I think we need just probably just about, a little bit more. yeah, a little bit more there. All right, I think that's probably gonna be just where we. Okay, now how much will this make? Um, so this is gonna make a good bit. Yeah. Um, this batch here would probably, you could probably easily do a dinner for four uh, to At six least, people. Yeah. All right, so we can kind of see how it just holds its shape for mm -hmm. a little bit before it's, it drops down. Yeah. Um, so that's right where we want it. So right, great. if we were at home, what I would do is I would let this rest. Is um, it going to thicken up a little bit more as it rests? Oh, or? you know what? Thank you. Okay. We're going to add a little butter. That's uh, a little warm. So all just of it, be careful. Or? Not all okay. of it. Um, and it's kind of interesting. Stop right there. It's amazing what the butter does at the end um, because it actually kind of tightens up. Um, so you want to add the butter after you've already mixed yep, it? Yep, pretty much when you have it done. And that also helps incorporate the rest of the flour okay. um, and kind of brings it all together. Yeah, you can see how it's changed the texture. Yeah, it's a little see glossier. how it's like a little glossier right. and it kind of 
um, almost like thickens up just a touch. Yeah. All right. So from now we're just gonna let this sit. Okay. If you're at home, this could rest an hour to two hours, and that just helps just like mm -hmm. any pasta. It helps the gluten relax a little bit. Stay tuned for more of The Chef's Kitchen. We're back with more from The Chef's Kitchen. We have some really beautiful baby carrots. These are really beautiful baby carrots. I love all the different colors. Yeah, they're gorgeous. So we have purple, yellow, mm -hmm. and um, orange. And, and the purple can, ones look so cool inside. Yeah, and you can kind of see how yeah. beautiful they are. They have that nice yellow. Um, so I'm just clipping some of the stem off. Mm -hmm. I always like to leave a little bit of green so on there. Cute. Yeah, you just have to be careful. <laughs> Sometimes we have a little bit of sand or dirt can get oh, stuck right. in there, so you want to kind of give them a good rinse. Right. So I'm just going to quarter these guys up. Okay. Um, and if you want to go ahead and add um, a little bit of butter, maybe to this, this back guy there. Yeah. How many? Um, just go one. Okay. Let's go one more. All right. So I'm just going to add these guys right to it. Okay. Um, and so I have a little chicken stock here. Mm -hmm. um, and have, look at this, look at this jiggle, I love that. That's clearly homemade, not from a can. That is definitely mm -hmm. homemade. Um, we were, that's kind of a, a nice chicken braise that we do, but you can use a store-bought chicken stock. Sure. I would always go to a local butcher and see, because everyone's selling nice bone broth it's and true. things like that these days. And so from here, I'm just gonna add just a little touch of onion to this. I notice you use Cipollini onions a lot. So I, I enjoy them because um, they're a little sweeter. Mm -hmm. They're not as in your face onion quality. Right. Um, and so I always, there are a lot of people that don't like onions. And I feel like a Cipollini is a, a kind of a, a milder form. That's, like a starter onion. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right. So I'm just going to add to this. Um, a little bit of garlic. Again, with your back slice. Yeah. I know, especially with garlic, it's important. Especially with garlic. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's one of my my favorite ways to use garlic. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, that's another thing. People get scared about garlic and using it in different sure. recipes. Um, with the back slice, it keeps the garlic a little bit more mild. It controls the flavor a little bit better. Um, and you can really, I know it's kind of crazy, you can taste the difference in, yeah. in your sauces and your vegetables. Well, it's also worth noting, you cut all of your vegetables to order at the restaurant, which yeah. is not an easy thing to do. I don't know if everybody realizes what a challenging thing that is and how few restaurants actually do that. Well, and it's, it's one of those things that I think for us, we're a smaller restaurant. We really care about our products and, yes. and the things that our farmers bring us. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't want to mess them up. Yeah, you, know, you treat I them with a lot like, of respect, yeah. which and is so, really, really big. Um, so we always, anything that we, we won't take shortcuts if we don't have to. Yeah. Um, okay, so in here, I'm just gonna add, this is a little bit of our stock. So we'll just do a little bit of whole grain mustard in there. I've turned that flame down, um, and then we can kind of just let these guys simmer. All right. All right, um, we'll definitely add a little bit of lemon. Um, and a touch of sherry. Another leeches more yeah, signature. And, and really this is one of those things, the acid is helping bring the flavors together. It actually helps your mouth and your tongue taste the food better. Mm -hmm. It acts as a bridge to your taste receptors. It's one of those things that brings it all together. I use it a lot. It is one of those things, there are certain dishes where you want to taste yeah, the sherry, you right. want to taste the lemon but you don't always taste it. It's you like know, salt. salt. Yeah, it's, it's like, like dedical, flavor it, enhancer. very delicate. Yeah. That's really cool, I All love right. that. I have some uh, Hen of the Woods mushrooms. Nice, uh, you've these already guys, cooked these down. We've already cooked these guys. This is what they look like when they're raw. Mm -hmm. um, and we just kind of sear them off in a little bit of blended oil. Okay. Um, a touch of salt, sherry vinegar. So I'm gonna add a <laughs> pinch to this. Um, and this is really gonna bring the carrots, the mustard, it's the earthiness. It brings it all together, which is kind of cool. I'm gonna just add one more pinch of Cipollini's. Great. All right. So next, let's go ahead and start our chicken breasts. Okay. Um, Gorgeous chicken breasts. I know you mentioned you get these from a local farm. Yep, these are from uh, Creaky Tree Farm. Creaky Tree, uh, Creaky a cute Tree. Name. It is, and they're, it's kind of neat. Their farm has a lot of trees that actually okay. do creak. Really? <laughs> yeah, so it's really pretty cool. Uh, a little trick. Um, Really cooking any proteins, mm -hmm. but um, meats too. Uh, you can do this with fish. Moisture is kind of your enemy. For crispiness? Um, yes, for crispiness. So a lot of times I'll just take a, a paper towel mm -hmm. and just kind of blot off any excess moisture. Okay. Um, and then let me just... I feel like even if your proteins are dry, if you have them sit out on the counter for a little bit, they tend to release even more moisture as exactly. they sit. Exactly, yeah. Um, and that's, I think there's a big movement to actually pull you know, your uh, protein's out 15, 20 minutes mm -hmm. before you cook it. That helps bring the temperature up, right. so it's not such a huge shock 
um, which then seizes up the muscles and can break the cell walls and things like that. Great. All right. So I'm just adding a little bit of blended oil to this. All right. Um, you can see it already getting nice and shimmery. Yeah. Now, I wanted to mention that you and Bolit have been James Beard nominated. So uh, last year, and, uh, for 2019, we were mm -hmm. actually nominated for Best Restaurant. Fantastic. Um, and we made the semi-finalist list, which is 10 restaurants. That's amazing. Um, yep. And um, hopefully, you know, the James Beard is one of those things that every chef chases. Yeah. And uh, hopefully someday we'll be a finalist. That's and, amazing. Yeah. Well, it's a huge honor. Congratulations. And we're rooting for you well, for the future. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to add a little bit of veg stock here, okay. um, just because I know time-wise, uh, that's probably going to get us right where we want it. Great. Stay tuned for more of The Chef's Kitchen. We're back with more from The Chef's Kitchen. And we'll season our chicken. Um, and, you know, chicken is one of those things that I feel like when you're cooking it uh, in the kitchen, we always joke about how angry it is. Oh, um, angry chickens, huh? You, angry birds? Well, you have to be careful because you do tend to get a lot of splatters oh, um, okay. from your oil. Um, so I'm just going to come in here and add these guys in. And I noticed you season that right before you put them in the pan. Yep, is that a, intentional? It is intentional. It's, it's kind of the same premise as the drier the chicken, the better. Sure. Because um, so that salt's going to pull out moisture. The salt's going to pull out moisture. So the longer it sits there, the more moisture is going to pull out. Right. Um, and it's going to affect your sear. Um, so we talk about adding the chicken. We cooled down the pan a little bit. Right. Um, so I want to have it return to uh, heat. So you want to keep that flame as high as possible. I want to keep beginning. that flame as high as possible in the mm -hmm. beginning. Um, and then one of the ways that I really have found um, to get a really nice, crispy uh, chicken skin, we're actually going to roast this in the oven. Okay. Um, but as this pan sits here, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm just going to baste this mm. with oil. All right. So you start cooking it from the other side. From the other right side. From the get -go. And also because it's going in the oven, that oil is going to coat the whole thing which helps promote even cooking nice. throughout the whole thing. You even help get that a little brown, exactly, too. Exactly, exactly. So, now you're going to cook that skin side down the entire time? Yes, and that's kind of the way that I found yeah. you can get the best um, best skin. Um, so you can see I'm starting to get a little color Oh, yeah. Um, it happened fast. So I now I'm ready. We're going to go ahead and take this guy and put it right in the oven. Great. Um, <clears throat> All right, so we have that at 400 degrees. I'm gonna slide this over. We're just gonna kind of keep cooking our vegetables and then let's jump over um, to our spetzel. So a nice trick, and there's a lot of different ways to cook spetzel. In the restaurant, we usually use a hotel pan. Now, why a hotel pan rather than a big pot of water? So I'll show you. Okay. Um, we're gonna come right over here. I'm just gonna bring this guy in. Oh, I see where we're going. Yeah we have a perforated hotel pan. Got it. Right? And we're gonna slide that right on top. Um, one of the things that I do is I have another hotel pan underneath it mm -hmm. um, because it can be very messy. Okay. Um, um, so I do also have this off the heat. Mm -hmm. A lot of times someone will put it on this and then get sidetracked. Oh, okay. Then when you dump your spetzel into it, it'll actually just cook right to Got it because it, it gets too hot. That makes sense, yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna come in here. Slide you probably have to work in. pretty quickly then. Yep, this is a, a definitely a little bit faster. Okay. Um, I guess with the dough is thick enough, it's just not immediately sliding right. through. Right, and we're not, so far we have none that has slid through. All right, Just to kind Starting. of give you an idea. <laughs> yeah. All right. So from here, I'm just going to use a bench scraper and kind of work my way. This is such a cool technique. Back and forth. Um, and so as I'm doing this, if you watch, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really pushing down okay all right as i go right um and i want to be careful to get it as even as i can all right the same principle if i let it sit too long in one spot that dough is going to really start to cook right now you'll push all of this through at once i will all right um, uh, sometimes if you do a bigger batch you'll have um, to go, you have to go yeah in different batches mm -hmm. um, if you ever have trouble sliding it through sometimes i feel like if you just kind of go back and forth in right. longer um, strokes, you'll get it through, or you can even play around with, you know, the technique that works the best for you, where right. I'm just kind of pushing it through. Well, you're really um, angling the pastry cutter down. Yes, and that's Almost kind like of 
spackle. Right. And well, it's funny, you can actually buy like a plastic uh, spackling. Oh, uh, really? That works a little bit better than the metal bench scraper. Spackle. Yeah. Spetzel. <laughs> There's a pun in there somewhere. <laughs> somewhere, for sure. <laughs> I'll look for it later. <laughs> all right, so once we get that all through, now we're just gonna come in here. You have your trusty hotel pan right Wow, look nearby. at all that. That's so cool. All right. So here, I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna gently stir this guy. All right. How long do these take to cook? So pretty much it's similar to a gnocchi that mm -hmm. once they float, you're pretty much ready to go. So that's it, that was really fast. Yeah. So you're gonna shock these. Yeah, um, and then you could potentially right now serve these. So you um, would go right into the brown butter straight from here. And the reason that I'm not going to is because they have so much moisture on them yeah. that I don't want it to kind of make a, a mess. Okay. Um, so a lot of times this is the part where if we come into here, um, now we have them, we can clear off the ice, uh, dry them off a little bit, toss them okay. in oil. That, um, so you can get that crispiness on them. Exactly. So now like when you're cooking pasta, a lot of times you want to utilize that starchy water to help make a sauce. Is that not so important That's here? That's not so important okay. with this one, especially because of the brown butter. Right. Um, sometimes that'll just end up sticking together. Gotcha. Um, Stay tuned for more of The Chef's Kitchen. We're back with more from The Chef's Kitchen. Now I can kind of come in, most of the ice is melted. So I can literally just scoop that off. And the reason I bring that up is because if you get ice in your spetzel, that's moisture. Uh, and as it melts, if you store it, the ice cubes right. are still in there. Um, that's gonna kind of affect your sear. It's also gonna sog out your, your spetzel. True. So we're gonna come right over here. And I'm just gonna dump a little of this out for now. Right. It almost looks like corn. Yeah, it's kind of neat. And if you want to take a little taste, I let's... do. Mmm, the mustard. It's kind of it's amazing, so unique. Right? It's subtle, but I love it. All right, so we're gonna wait till this browns. Okay. Um, and then that's kind of the key. One of the things with Spetzel is you have to have a hot pan because if it's not hot enough, it's just gonna stick to the pan. Got it. Um, which is never fun. Okay, so we have some really nice brown butter there. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can smell it. It's I'm one gonna... of my favorite smells and flavors on the planet. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop these guys right in. Mm -hmm. All right. So at first, I'm just gonna do a little shimmy there. Okay, um, so you want it kind of to sit for a little bit. Yeah, what I like to kind of do is almost get a little caramelization on that one side, mm -hmm. just because we do have some moisture that's still in there. Um, so if I toss it right away, it's gonna cool the pan off and we're not gonna really get the crispness, crispness that we want. All right. I'm gonna just come and take a look at our chicken, see how we're doing. So, so that cooked pretty quickly. So we're still a little under here, mm -hmm. um, but it is, it's kind of caramelizing pretty quick there. So what I'm gonna do, just to kind of speed it along, is move it to the burner. I'm now gonna season my other side here. Okay. All right. And I'm gonna go ahead and flip these guys over. Oh, that looks incredible. All right, so now we'll just kind of let these guys finish up um, as we're waiting for the rest of this stuff to cook. Okay. All right. Let's come in here. Give this guy a little stir. I'm gonna just turn up the heat. We'll finish kind of deglazing that. Okay, so I think we're just about ready to plate here. Our spetzel's really looking very yeah, nice. nice. We're toasty. getting some nice color there. Um, so I'm gonna come in, I'm just gonna add a little bit of dill mm. to our vegetables here. Brighten a, that up. A little bit of parsley. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a little butter um, right in there. Of course, we'll do a little sherry vinegar. <laughs> Who didn't see that coming? <laughs> and will you just grab a pinch of thyme? Sure. Uh, and just hit me with a pinch of thyme right in there. All right, and then I'm just gonna do a little base here. Ooh, yeah. Um, 
And that kind of, like, so it kind of brings the natural juices of the chicken, that acid, a little yeah. bit of butter together. Once that thyme and the butter and the vinegar hit yeah. that pan, it, oh, it, it really wakes everything so up. Good. All right, so I think we're all set to plate. Great. All right, so we got our spetzel down there. Um, Beautiful. The carrots really thickened up nicely. Yeah, and they're they're glazed up really nicely. Yeah. And we'll come right in here. Mm. And this is kind of fun, you know. I just kind of think of, of the way my mom used to yeah, do it. Yeah, this is so homey. Yeah. I was just thinking. Uh, so over here, I have just a little. This is a little red mustard green to kind of bring it all together. I always love to garnish with a little fresh greens. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll come right in here. We have our chicken. Wow. And we are all set to go. This looks great. All right, so you know, I have a little crispy onions here. Uh, that's always kind of nice to have a little different texture. We'll just sprinkle those guys on there. Love that. All right, let's dig in. Look at that. It looks so juicy. I'm gonna take this piece with the big chunk of skin on the end. All right, I'll grab this guy right mm. here. Mmm. You know, chicken can seem so ordinary and so basic, but when it's prepared this well, and the quality of the chicken is this good. It can really be something otherworldly, and this is really good. Thank you, Nicole. Mm. Sometimes I surprise myself. <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me of home. It's exactly what I want to eat on a cozy winter day, just like today. Thank you, Lee, so much. It's so great to have you here on the Thank show. You. Thanks it's for always me. a pleasure. I love to be on Chef's Kitchen so that I can show the techniques that we do in the restaurant, uh, the products that we use, the life that goes into the food and share it with the customers.